So you made the decision to take the plunge and install a UV light in your pond. Great idea. So this is a typical uh, UV light that you would find in the store. This, as it says right on the box, it's for out of water use. Do not put this in your pond. It goes outside of the pond and you're going to put it in line with your filtration system. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either have an independent pump that runs just the UV light so you don't have to interfere with any of the stuff that you already have in place or you can hook it up to your existing, you know, waterfall and skimmer box if you have the, the, the setup like we do behind me. Um, that's what we're gonna go over in this video. I'm gonna show you how to install a UV light like this one here. Anyone can do this, and I'm gonna show you how step by step. First off, it claims 10,800 gallons per hour. That's the flow rate, the maximum flow rate that this thing will be effective at. I wouldn't recommend it for anything over three to 4,000 gallons. The pond behind me is about two to 3,000 gallons. So this UV light, some might say is overkill, but it's gonna get the job done and be really, really effective. We won't have to turn down our flow rate at all. It can flow right through here and we're gonna get really great results. I know the pond behind me isn't green yet. I was kind of waiting uh, for the algae to take over so I could show you how effective these lights really are but you know what it's early in the season i don't want to deal with a green pond so we're going to get this going and get this in today okay let's see what's inside the box okay inside the box here now this is a step down or step up however you want to look at it this will allow you to hook this uv light up to just about any size uh, tubing you may have in place in your pond. It comes with two of these, one for each side. One's an inlet, one's an outlet. It doesn't really matter which way the water flows through this UV light. Uh, it's just how you put it in line. Whatever size uh, tubing you have in your pond, you're gonna wanna cut this. So use a hacksaw or a sawzall or a, a jigsaw, you know, anything that can get the job done. But when you cut it, make sure that you cut it so that the opening is completely the next step. This gives you the maximum flow rate. The larger the opening, the faster the water can flow through. A couple other interesting fittings here. Your bulbs in this cardboard tube. You gotta be careful with this. It's pretty fragile. Okay, so the UV light itself. Now this one is stainless steel on the inside. And the benefit of that is that it reflects the UV light so it's a little more effective, I, I believe, than say a, a black or white tube. So the ballast is attached to the light itself. Uh, it says not to, to put this in direct sunlight, whatever. We can turn it upside down. It's got some feet to stand on, you know, just like that. This thing pivots around. We can put it underneath just like that, just to keep it out of the sun. And, you know, you can pretty much swivel this however you want to. This is kind of neat here too. So if you wanted to, as you can see, you got two ends here, one end here. So you can put your water inlet, however, however your piping or tubing is orientated. You can come in one end, and then if you wanted to go up or down or you know side to side, however you wanted to do that, this gives you the option of you know going in an S shape or a U shape, however you want to do that, or however it fits into your landscape. Okay, so now that we went over the basics of the UV light, there are some additional things you will need to for this installation. Uh, one of which is rubber cement. Also, we have some black silicone and we have various fittings, elbows, couplers, there's reducers. You know, you don't need all these, let's say, but uh, it depends on, again, what your system looks like originally and what you're going to be going into. But these are just some things that you may need to complete your project. So we're gonna be replacing the old UV light with this one, and we're gonna basically hardwire it in with using rubber cement into our system. So let's get this project started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is shut off our waterfall. Now, if you have a check valve in your pond, you're gonna to wanna to drain all the water out of your line. You can do that by simply unhooking your pump to the line. Let's take a look in here. Okay, so I stopped my, shut my pump off. Uh, so 
Sometimes this happens. Fish wind up in the net, the ones that aren't so smart. <laughs> this guy, he always has an issue. It's the same fish. So just toss him back in there, he's fine. All right, so good time to clean out your, your net and everything else. But anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, loosen our pipe clamp. Now you gotta be careful because all the water that's in your reservoir up in your waterfall is gonna come shooting back down in your face. So when you do this, keep your cover handy and then you just kind of loosen this. Oh. Okay. And as you can see, it comes out pretty fast. So we're just gonna let all that drain out and that'll clear our line and then we can get started upstream. And what I did was the, uh, the trap door got closed and the water started coming up. So all I did was push that down. It allows all the, the water to go back into the pond. I know it's, it's a little nasty, but it'll be all right. See what I'm saying? How this is higher than the pond. All you gotta do is push the trap door and then it releases all the water. We'll let that finish. Again, we can clean our mat out. Okay, so we're gonna go upstream and expose the line. This is the hardest part of the whole thing is just exposing your line. So, you know, once you get that done, it's a piece of cake. Now you don't wanna hit your main line. So you gotta kinda be very careful as you uncover. You wanna make sure you move all your electrical lines. I have lights here, so move those out of the way. Just all the little things you gotta think about when you're doing something like this. So right now I have both ends exposed. There's another boot there, I have a boot there, we have it uncovered. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just take off the hose clamp, to both ends and remove this whole PVC apparatus. All right, loosened up both ends of the boot. Once you get one end, and just pull the other end off. Okay, so this was from my original video. We're gonna uh, get rid of this and put our new UV light in. Okay, after playing around with the fittings that we have, uh, this is how we're going to attach our particular setup to this UV light. Now we have a two inch line running from our filter box to our waterfall unit. So I'm gonna use a two inch elbow I'm going to rubber cement the two inch line directly into the elbow. The elbow is going to go into the UV light with another piece of flexible line. And then this is how it's going to attach to the UV light. Now, this came with the UV light. This is a couple more pieces that I had to purchase. So you have the two inch elbow, and then you have a reducer that goes from two inch to inch and a half because the UV light itself is an inch and a half uh, opening and it must be inch and a half all the way through, I'm assuming. So the way we're gonna attach this is, there's a rubber gasket here. You wanna make sure that stays in place because if you lose that, your fitting will leak. Okay, you have this, this holds this on, this flange. So these pieces all came with the UV light. This is going to be uh, rubber cemented into this, okay? And you have your threads in there. Then this goes over top. You can see the, the flange there, holds it in place. And then this whole thing gets screwed onto here against that rubber gasket seal. And that's what attaches to the UV light. This, we're gonna have our flexible pipe rubber cemented into, into this. And then this gets screwed into here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's gonna be going like this because it's gonna go out to the waterfall unit or, or however we wanna, whatever way we set this in place. If you do have to use these, or you want to use these, they go the same way. If you have a smaller line in your pond setup, you just toss these, you don't need them, and you'll use this instead. That's, that fits in there just the same way. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to cut off uh, whatever you don't need. Make sure you cut it off, because if you do not, the water flow will only go through 
the minimum space that you have. So if you, if you have a one inch line and you just slide it on there, water's gonna be restricted and have to go through here before it gets there and that'll, that'll slow down the flow of your waterfall and you don't wanna do that. You want maximum flow uh, that you can get from your pump. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to thank Hans Ponds for making this video possible. If you're in the Western New York area, I recommend you stop in and check them out. They have koi, pond supplies, just about anything you need, they'll have it. Now, before we go and install this, I just wanted to go over a little comparison here. This is our old UV light that we were using in previous years. It worked great, really no complaints. Uh, the only thing with this one is obviously it's a little bit larger, so it's, it's a little longer, maybe a little bit harder to hide. This being stainless steel will, re will reflect the UV light all around, and I believe it'll be a little more effective than this one. The flow rate on this was a little bit uh, lower than this is, but we'll see, I guess uh, time will tell. This one does not have the ballast attached to it. It's, it's separate on the line, so you'd have, you, you have to find a place to put that and uh, hide it. I really like that this is attached right to the light, keeps everything organized and set into one place, so. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue up our fittings right here at the table. Uh, it's a good idea to have cardboard underneath. Once you glue one of these uh, PVC fittings on, you're never getting it out, so just understand that. So make sure it's exactly what you wanna do before you do it. Okay, we got a couple pieces of flex pipe cut. Have our fittings laid out here. We know what we're doing, I think. That all gooped up in there. Some on both things you wanna glue together. You can be very generous with this cement. So stinks, make sure you're outside. You just put it in there and hold it for a second. Shouldn't take long. And you're not gonna get that apart, that's it. So make sure you get a nice, good seal in there. Again, you only have a few seconds to put it together once you get it glued up. Just give it a second and chemically bonds together. Now using flexible line rather than the rigid PVC gives you a lot more room for error. Let's go see uh, where we fall here. All right. The light bulb itself is not in the UV light yet. Uh, we're just kind of dry fitting everything to make sure it all fits together before we go ahead and tighten everything down. And this one goes on the other side. Nine inch piece there. And we can go nine inch. So I'm gonna go cut two more nine inch pieces, bring this back over to our gluing station, glue on nine inch pieces, and then we'll tighten everything down and put the bulb in. Now when you put these on, you wanna make sure that you have your flange piece already, your threaded piece already on here. Because once you screw this in, you're not gonna be able to do that. Uh, there's a little pro tip, and that is if you use black silicone on the threads, number one, you won't see it because it's black and it'll blend right into the PVC. And number two, it creates a really nice bond that won't leak where your threads are. And if you ever needed to, you could still undo it. It would just be a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. So we're just gonna put a little bead around here. You know, nothing worse than getting everything back together and having to take it all back apart because you got a leak. So I'm gonna try and make sure that doesn't happen. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And then we'll go put the whole thing in place. Now the silicone doesn't dry as fast as the PVC cement obviously, but it's just a little extra precaution that we take. One thing you might wanna do is to save the box to store the UV light in for when the season's over and you wanna store it. So we're gonna take the bulb out. Now inside of here is a crystal tube. that holds the light and keeps it separate from the water. So we're gonna remove the end. We have to slide the bulb into the 
crystal tube. Oh, the crystal tube on this unit is attached. This is all one unit. It looks like it's attached in there and it's all sealed up and, and good to go. So that's all we have to do is plug our light bulb in here and uh, let it rip. Pretty easy. It's four prongs. Don't drop your bulb on the stone. That'd be a bad day. The little rubber thing for stabilization. So it looks like they only go one certain way, kind of off center. Every other way you, you try and, and orient this, uh, this bulb, that's the only way they go in. So that's how I'm gonna plug it in. Just make sure that's pushed in all the way. Gently slide it together. All right, and then thread it back on there. Okay, so now the light's in place. Our fitting is, are all ready for us. Gaskets are still there, we're good. Now when you remove this for the season, you can, uh, you can remove the bulb if you choose. So hold on to your tube. If you don't want to, you can probably just leave it the way it is and throw it in the box as long as you're careful not knocking it around too much. One. What plant is that called? It's called. So I'm using this rubber boot. Make sure that's tight. Okay. Now these flexible pipes, like I said, gives us a lot of leeway to you know, put our UV light wherever we want it exactly. Okay, all that's left to do now. Screw these on here. Again, if any of these Threaded fittings are not tight enough. You can always get a big pipe wrench. Just give them a little tweak. That's about all we'll need. This flexible pipe is so much more forgiving than that PVC was. Keep our ballast on top. Now I'm not gonna plug this in yet. So I wanna make sure it's not leaking before I do. All right, so let's turn this on and uh, you'll be watching to see if it leaks. All right, so we're gonna hook up our pump back into our system. Now I didn't get a chance to clean out my filter. I'll do that afterwards. We're just checking for leaks. So we're gonna plug everything back in. Okay, fingers crossed. I'm gonna take a walk over and check it out. Whew. All right, everything looks good. Nice dry. No drips anywhere. This is great. Here's a little closer look what we actually did today. See the PVC fittings look great. All we gotta do is plug the light in and we're killing algae, man. Now I didn't have to make these lines as far as I did. This is just where I had the old one. So that's why I did it the way I did it. If you wanted to do it a little tighter or pretty much in line with your system, you could totally do that, no problem. I got this big clump of grass here that's gonna spring up and hide all this. So in a matter of weeks, it'll all disappear. Been running for a few hours. You always come back and kind of spot check it, make sure that there's no leaks. Always a good thing, because you don't want your pump to uh, run dry. So you can see I have the light plugged in now. There is a sight on this. You can see the blue light in there. That's the UV light doing its thing. Water's flowing through there. It's gonna clear up your water and keep it clean all season. So there you go. That's how you install a UV light into any system. It's a real simple job. 
gonna be done in an hour or so, afternoon. Just make sure you got the right fittings before you start. And like I said, the hardest part is just digging out your line. You wanna add it on its own line? All you need is a pump and a return. Pretty simple. So there it is, crystal clear water. That's what you get when you put a UV light in your pond. Now this has been running for about a week now, and as you can see, the water is crystal clear. If you have any questions about a UV light for your pond, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to leave a like. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, enjoy your backyard water garden.